It is great to see you this morning. It's great to gather together and worship and to honour just Jesus in our midst. I wanna welcome you if this is your first time here. We are so gr glad to have you, so glad that you're with us. Uh, we're gonna have a time of worship. We'll also, we're gonna do some baby dedications this morning, which is wonderful. It's one of my favourite things to do. And then we'll have a, a word from Murray and I don't know, but I'm just, I'm hungry for more of Jesus. Is anyone else in here with me in that? So I wanna invite you just to stand and to just open up your hearts, open up, just close your eyes and focus on Jesus, the King of Kings. I wanted to read this, this Scripture over us this morning from Psalm 92 in the Passion. It's so enjoyable to come before You with uncontainable praises spilling from our hearts. <laughs> How we love to sing our praises over and over to You, to the matchless God, high and exalted over all. At each and every sunrise, we will be thanking You for Your kindness and Your love. As the sun sets and all through the night, we will keep proclaiming, You are so faithful. Melodies of praise will fill the air as every musical instrument joined with every heart overflows with worship. No wonder I'm so glad I can't keep it in, Lord. So let's just start speaking out in our own words, our gratitude and thankfulness to God who is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Lift up your voice and just say, Lord, I'm glad to worship You this morning. Thank You for Your goodness. Let praise just bubble up and explode out of You this morning. Even before the band starts singing, we just wanna raise up a sound to Jesus who's worthy of our praise and adoration this morning. Jesus, we declare that You are the King of glory. You are the one that we are here for. This is for You. It's all about You, Jesus. And we just declare, we love You. We love You. We love You, Lord. We welcome Your presence amongst us, Holy Spirit. Come and have Your way. Let our worship be a fragrant offering to You, Jesus. Let it please You this morning. We give You all of our minds, all of our hearts, all of our bodies, all of our senses. Come and have Your glory, Lord, amidst us this morning. Have Your way. There's plenty of space at the front here if you wanna come down and worship at the front. Let's go for it, church family.
every voice We sing holy, holy
Keep your eyes on him. Let's stay in this place for a bit. He is so worthy. There's no one like you, God. There's no one like you. We're gonna go back into that bridge. There's no one found more worthy than you, Jesus. No one compares to you. Let's just go back to that and worship, pour out our hearts to him this morning. That there is nothing and no one compares to him. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him.
we are free, we are righteous, just stand in that, in that victory that we have in Him. There's so much joy in that. Holy Spirit, would you come and renew our minds with your joy? Renew our minds, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because it's so easy to follow you. <laughs> it's so easy to love you. There's no striving. There's so much joy in pursuing you and being pursued by you. And we love you. Continue pouring out your joy, Jesus. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. We welcome the spirit of joy amongst us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. You, you may be here and maybe you're thinking, Esther, Ash, I don't feel that joy. I feel the opposite, I feel heaviness, I feel sadness. I just feel like the Lord wants to do a divine transaction right now. So I just want, if you're not feeling it, it's okay. It's His joy that strengthens us. In His presence, there's fullness of joy. And where we're weary or tired, He wants to pour in His strength and His love. It's, it's as simple as us just knowing that He's very, very, very happy to be with us all the time in every circumstance. So just shake off anything that might feel heavy on you this morning. Just I like to do prophetic acts sometimes because it helps activate my body and keep it in alignment with what the Holy Spirit's doing. And so if you just feel any heaviness, just shake it off and say, I receive your joy. I receive your love this morning, Holy Spirit. And you may be in this place and maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never known what it is to follow Him, to have Him come and transform your life. I've had this Scripture going around in my mind this morning from Matthew 11. And I just wanna speak to those in this room that have never surrendered their heart to Jesus because He's here in this moment. Maybe you're watching online. He's speaking to you in this moment. Maybe you gave your life to Him a long time ago and you feel like you've walked away from Him. I just wanna read this from Matthew 11 in the message. Are you tired? worn out, burned out on religion, trying to do it in your own strength. Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I, this is Jesus, the Saviour, won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And I know what it was like to be trying to do things in my own strength, trying to fit in with other people, trying to do the right thing, but always doing the right thing, the wrong thing. <laughs> I remember those days in my life as a young, teenager and as a young adult trying to live life, trying to have fun, but not filling the hole that actually was in my heart. And then when I was 21, I crashed into a love that I'd never experienced before. And although on the outside I might have looked like I had joy, on the inside there was sadness and heaviness and I didn't quite feel like I fit in my own skin. And then I met the One, the Saviour, Jesus Himself, who, who radically rescued me and placed me into Him. I let go of the old and I embrace the new. He is the best person to recover our lives with. Jesus has the best life recovery. He is the best recovery program ever and He is freely available to us today. So if you have never said yes to Jesus or you've turned away from Him, I wanna take a moment now. I wanna invite everybody to stand. Just stay where you are. 
we wanna give you a moment to respond to His invitation this morning to take off what doesn't feel like it fits, to take off the heaviness and to receive eternal life and true rest, which only comes from a relationship with Jesus. So if you would like to give your life to Jesus, you can pray this prayer with me. We're all gonna pray this morning. It's as simple as you can pray with me. Jesus, I recognise I cannot do life without You. I cannot live up to the standard. I'm tired, I'm heavy laden. I want to find true rest today. So Jesus, I surrender my life. I receive Your forgiveness. Thank You, Holy Spirit, for filling me right now. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Jesus, I surrender to You. Take up home in me. Amen. Now we believe if you prayed that prayer for the first time or for the tenth time, Jesus takes you at your word and you've been born again and you've entered into a journey of relationship which is phenomenal with Jesus. And we wanna give you an opportunity to, to just come and meet some of our team who are over here, come and have them pray with you, have them answer any questions you may have. So if you prayed that prayer and you gave your life to Jesus, I want you to wave at me right now. Can you just wave your hand? Just wave your hand so we can see you. And we wanna give you a moment just to come forward, to take a brave step. Maybe you feel a bit nervous, that's okay. We've all done this before. You could turn to your neighbour and say, will you come with me? Or you could ask your neighbour, do you wanna go forward? And we wanna just celebrate the decision that you've made today with you. So now if you wanna just step out of your seat, take that brave step, come down. We wanna celebrate with you and enjoy and join in with heaven's celebration. I'm just gonna give you a moment longer. If you're watching online, just type in the chat. Thank you, Lord. It's never too late. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just give Jesus a shout of praise. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Wow, excellent. Well, why don't you give someone a, a hug or a high five or introduce yourself to them. Say hi. As you make your way back to your seats, thank you, worship team. We have an exciting morning this morning. We have baby dedications that are happening. So I'd like to invite any of the families that are having their babies dedicated to come up onto the platform, come to the front. If you are family, if you have family with you, they can come with you. Before we get into that, I just wanna give you a very big welcome. If you are here for the first time, we are so glad that you are here. It is great to have you. We'd like to get to know you. You can connect with our team in the Welcome Centre, which is through the glass doors at the back there. And they will, they will answer any questions you may have and get you connected into a group if you'd like to, or just get to know you and sign you up to, to plug in with Church Life. We're so glad that you are here. I hope you feel at home. My name is Ash. This is... And I'm Esther, good morning. Excellent. And before we do the dedications, as we're getting the families up here, I just would like to let you know, if you are from Ukraine, if you are one of our um, newer Ukraine family, we wanna give you a big warm welcome. We have a, a growing community of Ukrainian brothers and sisters who are making Catch the Fire their home. I know there's quite a few new people here today. I wanna let you know there is translation offered on Telegram, so you can use your phone and the app there, or we have a couple of Ukrainian people who can 
translate. If you just raise your hand, if you can translate and anyone that's new can come and sit beside you. Raise your hand, any of the translators and wave. Okay, but we wanna give you a big warm welcome. You can find out how to get the translation later on. Finally, it's just to finish off our worship or to continue with our worship. It's time for our times, tithes and offerings. I wanna give you an opportunity if you call Catch the Fire Toronto your home. Now is the time that you would uh, return your tithes to the Lord or sow your offerings. If you're a guest here, please do not feel under any obligation to have to give. There are ways to give on the screen. We don't pass buckets around. If you have any questions about how you might give, then you can find out from our Welcome Centre team as well. Okay, I bless you and thank you for being a faithful church family. May the Lord bless you and prosper you in every way. Wow, I think half the congregation has come up here. Isn't this good to celebrate? Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's plenty of space. Any pastors that wanna come up as well? There's plenty of space up here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and we're gonna meet the parents and the children who are being dedicated. Dedication is a biblical thing. We see it in Scripture with Hannah when she dedicated Samuel because the Lord answered her prayers and gave her a child. The Lord loves His people and He loves to bless us with an inheritance of children. So we have many arrows up here today. So I'm gonna start over here. Where's mum and dad? Okay, who would like to introduce? Can you do that? Okay, uh, introduce I'll hold this for you while you introduce uh, yourself this, to child is getting... This is the family of a woman, and the name of my child is Izodua. Where is, is this? Over yeah. here. Oh, hello. Izodua Zane, Iyobosa a woman. Thank you. Thank you, excellent. Oh, we're excited to welcome you. Okay, who's next? Here we go. Hi, this is Ava, and we, yeah, we're dedicating her because we just want her to be blessed all her life as well. Excellent. And your name? Emmanuel. And my wife, Maris, is right there. And a, little, a big sister? Big, big sister, sister, Zoe. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, Treasure. We're excited. Okay, who else is there? Just making sure. Uh, hi there. Uh, this is uh, Michael. He is two years, uh, two months old. Yeah, God bless. Excellent. Yeah. What's your name? Um, my name is Olga. Olga, excellent. We're excited to have you here. Look at him. He's got some muscles there. Hello. Hi, this is Matteo. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Belle, that's Gary. And Matteo is four and a half months old. Okay, why do you want to dedicate Well, his name is Gift of God. So more than anything, we're just really thankful to have him. Um, and hopefully um, he'll be brought up in a warm, loving community like yes. we were. So. Amen. Amen. You're full of life, young man. Excellent. Hello. Who's going to speak? Okay. <laughs> so we're dedicating uh, Jesse Alexander, Fernando. He's two months old. Yeah. And introduce mom and dad. Oh, and uh, yeah. So my wife, Tammy, and then our son, Milo, who got dedicated a little while back. Yes, and this is Sheldon, by the way. He used to be on staff here with us. He just forgot to let you know. <laughs> We're excited to welcome these little miracle. Okay, we have another one of our staff members here. I'm gonna let you guys, are you speaking? Who's, yeah, okay. Sorry. Okay, I'm Gabriel, this is Jonathan, and Atlas, our son. Um, we're dedicating him because um, this is our church, and yeah, we just wanted to do this. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, who else have we got? One more. Hello. Hello. My name is Chrissy, and this is my husband, FM. Some people know him as Haim, and this is Michael. We call him Misha. And we're dedicating him because we pray that he grows up in the Lord and eventually chooses to follow Jesus. Amen. Misha, well, we want to bless you guys as a church family. 
I know that parenting is not for the faint of heart. And so we pray Holy Spirit would fill each of you with wisdom and that each child, we declare that you will come to know Jesus at a very young age and have a life altering, full time relationship with Him and extend His Kingdom wherever you go, right? So let's stand up church family because we are doing this with them. We're saying we're with you in this, we support you and you're not alone. So let's stretch out our hands and we're going to declare this over these children and families. So let's do this together. There is no one like you on the face of the earth. We bless your heart to know that you are God's unique gift to the world. We bless your mind to come to understand the plans and destiny God has for you. We bless your natural talents and your spiritual gifts. May you discover and develop them at an early age. May you learn Oh, may everyone who looks after you in your childhood be kind and loving. May you learn to love God with all your heart, mind and strength. May Jesus become your Saviour, best friend and Lord in Jesus' Name. Amen. Excellent. We have... Certificates for each of you. If you haven't been given them yet, you'll find it on your way down. We bless you guys and we bless the children with the Holy Spirit to be filled with wisdom and revelation. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Let's give them all a cheer as they leave the platform. So good, isn't this so good? Oh, so I love good. It. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So this morning, Murray is going to share a message with us. Uh, when I introduced him this morning in faith, I said it's going to be good because I had not, <laughs> I didn't know what he was going to speak about. But guys, you, I don't think you're ready how good this is. It's oh. so good. Get excited. Um, I loved what he shared this morning. So be excited. It is really good. So. Give him a warm, warm applause oh, thank you, for Mary. Participating in the baby dedications. Good afternoon, everybody. That's, it's so good to be together. I love, love, love those baby dedications. It's just, parenting is a challenge, isn't it? And we need each other. Um, so bless you all. Okay, so last week, Ash preached, I thought, an incredible message on... Um, being desperate and hungry for the presence of God and more than that, the glory of God. And that's our desire as a church as we're sort of, we're in the two more weeks is our conference, annual conference that we're doing called Sent Ones. And really what we're believing for is that God would encounter, her, encounter us with His presence and His glory in a fresh and unexpected way. And then we're believing that He would release his holiness and His purity to us and catch us with His heart and His mission that we would be sent just as Jesus was sent. And so, you know, we're building up to that over the next couple of weeks. I'm preaching today on the holiness and the purity of God. Steve will be preaching next week on the mission of God. And if you haven't got your conference tickets yet, there's still time. I wanna encourage you to, you can sign up. There's a, a, a discount for us as a church family. And uh, we're also doing on the Saturday a kids conference in the morning. So if you don't have your kids signed up, ages up to, up to uh, age 12, uh, you can sign up as well. And we're, we're excited about that. But today I wanna just carry on that message that Ash shared. You know, we're in the, uh, this is today, uh, you know, since Friday night through to tonight as the, the Jewish New Year, uh, Rosh Hashanah. And uh, you know, when that, when that happens, we believe there's some significant things that shift in the spirit realm. And Ash had this uh, word about uh, this year being a threshold year. And last week she preached on coming you know, over the threshold, which requires us to leave what's behind us and to step into the more that God has for us. 
And we're gonna just pick up that theme again today and look at what that means because we, as a, at least you know, as a church, we wanna be desperate for the glory of God. Not just, you know, we love His presence amongst us, but there's something, and in us, but there's something beautiful about when God crashes in upon us and it's undoubtable. Un, you know, it's just so obvious that God is among us and, you know, we get undone in His presence. So I want you to turn, with your, if you have your Bibles with you, to Psalm chapter 24. And uh, it's gonna be up on the screen as well, but if you wanna get your Bibles out and follow along, that would also be good. This is... David, King David, a famous uh, Israelite, ancient Israelite king. And he's, scholars, theologists would think, think that he wrote this psalm on the occasion where the Ark of God, the covenant of, uh, Ark of the Covenant of God, which is symbolic for Israel of His presence. In fact, God said Himself He would dwell upon the, the, the top of that uh, Ark. And he's, this psalm was written on the occasion where it was being brought from someone else's house into the city of David, Jerusalem, and David, you know, experiencing the presence of God and Israel experiencing the presence of God in their midst, going from blessing an individual to blessing a nation. And so David's written this Psalm in that context. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, or another way of saying that is everything that can, is in the world, everything that's contained in the world, it belongs to God the world and those who dwell therein. So not just everything, but every body that's ever lived that is existent upon the earth right now, they all belong to God, whether they know it or not. For He has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. He is the Creator. And then David says this as he's declaring the majesty of God. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who will stand in His holy place? The answer is this, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, or doesn't, another way of saying that is doesn't lift up his heart to idols, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute, and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Pause. Then he goes on. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Well, who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Who are we asking for? When we're seeking the Lord, we're not just seeking a little bit of blessing. What we're seeking is the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, the army of God's, you know, the hosts, the, uh, the commander of the armies of God's angels. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He's the glorious King. And I love this. You know, we're pressing in for the glory of God. We're saying ancient doors within us, open up. Lord, let the ancient doors of this city open up and experience the glory of God. Let us see God and God in His glory, in His sovereignty, in His majesty, in His beauty, in His, in His absolute awe. That's what we desire that the King of glory would crash into our meetings and crash into our lives and transform us in His glory. He's already put His glory on the inside of us. Christ in us is the hope of glory, but there's a manifestation and a revealing that we're desiring for in a fresh and deeper measure. Amen? Yes. So, but the, the, the key to it is, you know, that if we wanna see the glory of God, there are conditions. And the condition is this, how you live your life matters. So he says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? And the answer is he who has clean hands. In other words, he whose actions are pure. He who has a clean heart. So the all organizing principle of our lives is Godward. He who doesn't lift up his soul to idols. In other words, doesn't put other things above God. And he who doesn't let speech that's untruthful, lies in other words, come out of his mouth. If we have those things, we get to see the glory of God. And then, and then he says in verse six, such is the generation of those who seek Him. Are you, are we 
that generation? Are we the generation that's gonna seek Him and allow Him to purify our hearts and make us holy so that we can stand in His holy place and we can experience the glory of the Lord? That's what I want. That's what our prayer is for this church community and for this city, in fact. And so Jesus is, reinforces this message. You know, what we know is the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, verse eight, He says this, blessed are the pure in heart. For what? They shall see God. Oh, come on, what a glorious thing that's gonna be. But for us to see the glory of God, in other words, we need to be pure hearted, pure in our actions, pure in our speech, pure in our worship. And so today there's three basic ideas that I'm hoping to convey to you uh, and for us to grasp hold of. And the first idea is this, that God, that holiness, I should say, in, in God's call to us as a whole, to be holy, that holiness is actually our participation in the life of God. Sometimes we think of holiness and we think of Christians and we think Christians sometimes have a bad reputation as that we're just really grumpy because, and miserable because we're trying really hard to be holy. And we've got a set of rules and regulations that we have to follow that squeezes all the fun out of it. But actually, to be holy is to be joyful because it's relational and we'll look at that in a minute. The second thing that I want us to, to understand is that holiness isn't just about living rules, it's actually about us living in the nature of God. God is love, the Bible says, and therefore to be holy, the essence, the very nature of what it means to be holy is to live in love not just wishy-washy love, but God's love. So to be holy is that we live in love. And then finally, to be holy means that we live in the outflow of God's love, which extends to all of us is what we call grace. That God doesn't love us because of our own ability and the good things that we've done, but He loves us because He loves us because He's so good. In fact, we're doing everything that we could to make Him not love us and yet He still loves us. And so to be holy actually means to live in the grace of God. So let's unpack those. The first one is that holiness comes from our relationship with God. David, in writing this Psalm, he understands that he's writing in the, in the context of God's story with the people of ancient Israel. He understands the story that they are being, they're being included in the story that God chose Adam, sorry, Abraham, the father of his, you know, the ancient Israelites, he, he chose him, not because of his goodness, but because God chose him out of it, right? And that, so God, David understands that Israel are the chosen people of God, and he understands that he himself is the chosen king of God in that moment, in that day. And so he's writing in the bigger picture, in the context of his relationship with God. He's not having to say, God, I'm gonna bring the ark so that you can love us. He's saying, you love us, so I'm bringing your presence in. So the ark of the covenant is gonna be amongst us because I understand that you have put me into your story is what David's saying. And that he's, he's you know, this call to, to dwell in God's presence and, and, and dwell in his relationship with God and understanding that it's our relationship with God when we fully experience God, we're gonna to wanna to become like Him. Which therefore means we're gonna live in increasing measures of clean hands, pure heart, not lifting up our souls to idols and not giving us, you know, being you know, angry in our speech. And here's the, here's the good news. You know, because when you talk about holiness, sometimes you can feel like, oh no, I'm gonna have all my sins pointed out. But here's the good news. You and I are already holy if we've said yes to Jesus. The, 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 the finished work of Jesus, His whole life, His death, His burial and His resurrection. Now, because He, is, because he was sinless, He's been resurrected and death hasn't got a hold on Him. You and I, when we say yes to Jesus, we're included in that life. And so we have, we have relationship with God, we're reconciled to God. God likes you, not because of the things that you've done, but because of the things that Jesus has done. 
when we're experiencing, as Esther was encouraging us to do, experiencing His smile and His affection, it's not because we're being holy and pure. Actually, the Bible says that we were enemies of God. We were hostile with Him. We didn't want to have anything to do with Him. And in that condition, Jesus died for you and I. What manner of love is this? From what planet does this love come from? It doesn't come from this planet. It comes from planet God, from God's presence. It's the nature of God. We experience that. Not only that, but not so we, we stand because of the blood of Jesus, all of our sins forgiven, all of our guilt atoned for, all of our shame cleansed from us. The Bible says that He's taken our sin and He's thrown it away as far as the east is from the west. Try that sometime. Travel east and see if you ever reach west. That's how far God's removed our sins from us. You and I, we so often, we live in consciousness of our sin and all the things that we've done wrong and God doesn't remember them at all. And so we can say with the Apostle Paul in, two, in Colossians 2, that what Colossians 1, we stand holy and blameless and above reproach in God's sight. You're already accepted in God. You're already loved more than you know. You're already receiving the smile of God's affection, even before you said yes to Him. And if you haven't said yes to Him yet, please know this, God is not angry with you. God is so desiring a relationship with you. He so wants to know you because He wants to pour out His love upon you. And so this holiness is an invitation to relationship. It's actually us participating in the life of God and trying to seek, trying to faithfully express that reality that we have God on the inside. And because we have God on the inside, the way that we live makes a difference. We have a relationship with God. Our, our, this, you know, that we've been included into God's story. You know that this Bible, while it may have been finished, God's story still carries on in you and I in this church. And this is a moment in our story of God that God wants to pour out His holiness upon us. He's still writing His story through you. God's desire for your holiness isn't that you would just be better people. It's that He wants to write His story in your life, through your life, through my life. And so therefore He's purifying us and making us more like Him so that the story that gets told is the story that He desires to tell that reflects His glory and His goodness. And so our motivation for holiness really is that we've been invited into this relationship with God where we get to know Him we get to experience His heart and learn His ways. And in the process, get to share our hearts with Him and have Him change us from the inside. Our motivation shifts from following rules or following just what the Bible says to stepping into a relationship with God that causes us to live in increasing measure like God. Now, of course, how do we know what God is like? Well, partly through our experience, but we don't wanna live just through our experience. We wanna live in the reality of the truth of God. The truth is a person, the living Word of Jesus, but we've got it written down in the Word of God. And so how do we know what God is like as we're developing this relationship with Him? This Bible tells us this is what God is like. So the more we understand and realise this when we read the Word and we enjoy it, not because we have to, but because it opens us up to a deeper relationship with God, the better. So 2 Peter, chapter one, verse, 2 Peter 1 verse 3, it says this. Speaking of God, His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, what God is saying is, I'm not expecting you to reach a standard. What I'm doing is I'm giving you my power to enable you to reach that standard. And then he says, but this is how it comes. This is how I'm giving it to you. It comes through the knowledge, which means not just a head knowledge, but an experiential knowing through the knowledge of who? Of Jesus, of God, who called us to His own glory and excellence. You have been called to glory and excellence. 
It's God's promise, it's God's purpose. It's part of your story, is your story as you've been called to glory and excellence. How do you get there? Will you receive the power of God to enable you to get there? And how do you receive that power? Through relationship with the Father. Come on. But if we drill down further, we see that relationship with God, yes, that is the essence of holiness, but there's an even, there's in a sense, a deeper element to that holiness. And that holiness, holiness is the love of God. Because when we get into relationship with God, what we find is that God Himself has given us His very nature. He's given us Himself, He's poured out His love in us and we experience His love and we live in that place of love. And if we live in love, we will be holy because we'll be like God. And we're not, when we're talking about love, we're not just talking about a wishy-washy sentimental thing that we know the world, you know, what, you know that maybe we've experienced before. In, in our culture today, there's a saying that says, love is love. And I understand the sentiment that we want to be people that are full of love, but sometimes in that statement, love is love, there are people that are excluded who don't believe those sort of things. But the reality, the truth of the, of, of the Gospel, the truth of the Bible is that love isn't love, God is love. And we don't get to choose and determine what love looks like. We have a perfect example of what, God look, of what love looks like. And I'll tell you what love looks like. Love is patient. This is God. God is patient. God is kind. God does, is not jealous. God is not boastful. God is not envious. God is not rude. God is not arrogant. God doesn't insist on His own way. He gives you free choice. God isn't uh, irritable. God isn't resentful. God isn't happy when things go badly. God is happy when things work out in His pers- if in truth. God, but, uh, He bears all things, hopes all things, believes all things, endures all things. God never fails. That is love. That is love. (laughs) To have pure hands and clean heart and, you know, to love God, to be holy is actually to live in love. You know, I, I realize I've got a very, very long way to go. You know, we're this morning on the, you know, just simple example, you know, on the, we're driving in to work, to this meeting this morning and we're praying together, you know, we're trying to do the spiritual thing and this car, this car pulls out in front of me and I'm wobbling and I'm flashing my headlights and I'm hitting the horn, I'm going, stop it! And I'm shouting at him like he can hear me and Ash stops praying. She's in the middle of a glorious prayer and she just stops praying. And like a minute later, I'm like, I guess I've got a long way to go with this love thing, right? And then a few minutes later, I'm like, well, that kind of killed the prayer time because we were just sitting in silence for a few minutes, you know? She's like, oh Lord, what did I do? (laughs) Our capacity for holiness isn't based on our ability to do the right thing. Our capacity for holiness is based on our ability to experience more of God's love. That's what we need. We don't need more rules and regulations. We don't need more fault failures pointed out. We don't even need to memorize Scripture per se, although that's a good thing. What we need is to experience God's love because holiness is love. And if you live in love, you're gonna live in holiness. So very briefly, there's three directions at least of love. There's an upward dimension for us where we love God. There's an inward dimension where we love ourselves. And there's an outward dimension where we love the people around us. And so for us to be holy, it actually means that we orient our lives around putting God first, not other things first. That's what David means when he says, doesn't lift up his soul to idols. What are the sort of things that we put first? Well, Sometimes we put our career first. Sometimes we put relationships first, our desire uh, for you know, our physical appetite. Sometimes we put sex first. Sometimes we put our gender or our, or our life or whatever it is, we put that first. And God's saying, I wanna reorder your priorities. Let me love on you. Let me pour out my love in you so that you can love me back with my love. And that will cause us to orient ourselves in our life in a different manner and orient ourselves to God. 
But as we orient ourselves to God, God also wants to pour out His heart into us so that the things that we're struggling with on the inside of us get healed and, and, and we get taken care of. Things like self-hatred, self-rejection, where we can't forgive ourselves. And we need God to come in and say, hey, I love you. I've forgotten all about those things. I made you, you're my precious son or daughter. Let me just wipe that off your slate. We can love ourselves, but we learn to love ourselves rightly so that we're not like, yeah, look at me, I'm amazing. Kiss the ring, walk into the room, everything's gonna bow to me because I'm just glorious. No, we love, we get a right perspective of ourselves where we see ourselves as loved by God and see ourselves with God's love in us but not great because of ourselves. And then we're talking about loving others. Where we learn not just to be accepting and tender towards our own weaknesses, but we learn to live in, in, towards love, towards others in love. Where we live without judgment, where we live forgiving, where we live with patience and being kind to each other, where we live with not being irritable and rude to each other. And maybe for some of us, what we're struggling with is unforgiveness. We're struggling with anger or gossip or malice or you know, hatred or rage or racism. Maybe we're struggling with fear and pride. Maybe we're struggling with arrogance. Maybe we're struggling to tell the truth at work. Maybe we're struggling with our eyes when we're married and we're just sort of wandering off, maybe even in our own desire to not love our wives anymore. Maybe we're struggling if we're not married to actually remain pure in regards to our sexuality. Holiness, the love of God pouring into us doesn't condemn us, but says, hey, there's a better way to live. Let me pour out my love through you. And Jesus, in John 17, He said this, I, His prayer was, Lord, let them be, I want them to be in the world, but not of the world. What does that mean? Well, Jesus is saying, because I'm pouring out my, because I'm gonna pour out my love into their hearts by the Holy Spirit, what I want you as a people, as a community, is to live fully engaged with the culture around you, to live fully engaged with the people that are in your, you know, in, in your, your neighbours and your friends and your work colleagues and your students at school and all of those things. Live fully present in love and honour and respect for people around you. Don't point out failures and shortcomings and false. You live in, in a sense of hope and expectation that you have an answer that you can love and bless other people with, right? But we also, so we're to live engaged in the world, engaged in the mission of God, but we're also to live in a way that we don't conform to the, to the, to the culture around us that we're in the world, but not of it. And so we, we, we allow the Word of God to shape us. We allow what the Bible says to speak to us. We allow our thinking to be transformed in God's love so that we live not conforming to the world around us. And here's the thing, when that happens, that may lead to persecution. Because in our culture and our society today, certain things that the Bible says are not good, the culture calls good, and actually sometimes the Bible ethic towards sexuality and gender, for instance, is actually seen to be immoral. So standing for the truth or standing up at work where you, where you tell the truth instead of telling a lie when your boss is putting pressure on you, that could lead to some difficulty and some challenge. But God's love is with us. Holiness equals living in love. The key to holiness is to receive more of God's love. And when we receive more of God's love, you know what, we're gonna be joyful. It's a happy holiness. And then finally, holiness is a participation not just in the nature of God who is love, but in the outflow of that nature, which is grace. And so holiness means that we live in grace. You and I, we haven't become holy on our own. Your effort hasn't got you to heaven. If you think it is, you need to come and talk to me afterwards because we've all fallen short, the Bible says. And so our 
ability to live the life that God wants us to live isn't based on our ability. It's based on God's love and His free gift of His love to us, which we call grace. Therefore, we should be the most gracious people on the planet. What does that mean? It means that we would have in our relationship with God, our relationship with God and His love causes us to be tender towards our weaknesses and our shortcomings. It causes us to say, oh yeah, okay, I blew it again like this morning. I blew it and I shouted and I raised my fist at somebody and the Bible actually says that that's murder. And I did that, but rather than thinking, man, I gotta get back into God's good books. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's gonna take me three weeks to get back into God's good books. All I need to do is step back and go, oh, grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. I don't deserve this. I didn't deserve it in the first place. And I receive your grace right now. It stops us from having to live out and get back into God's good books, but to live when we're already in God's good books. It allows room for our failure, but not only our failure, but it allows me to have grace for your failure and for you to have grace for other people's failure and for you to have grace with me for my failure. And when we're full of grace, what we are gonna be is hopeful. We're gonna be hopeful that there's always, when we fail or when other people fail, there's always forgiveness. There's always a fresh start in God. That's good news, isn't it? That when we fall, holiness doesn't mean working our way back up the ladder. Holiness means stepping back into the grace and the goodness of God, which is His nature. So as we talk about holiness, the thing about holiness is it's important and necessary for us to be able to see God and to step into the glory of God. But the good news is this, we've already been made holy by God in Jesus. And He's empowering us by the Spirit on the inside, by relationship with Him, by receiving His love and by understanding His grace. He's empowering us in that place of yielded relationship to Him to become more and more like Him. It's not something that we have to muster up. It's not something that we have to make energy for. It takes energy, but it takes investment into the relationship with God to receive God's love. So be in hope. You may be struggling with things in your own life right now. You may be aware, oh, in my life, I've got some things where I'm not living in, in, you know, with God as my first priority. Maybe there's some areas in your life where you're living, there's some things that I don't like about myself and I'm struggling to get around that and to have grace for myself. I, I'm my own, own worst critic. Maybe there's things that you're struggling with in your life where you are not living out in love to other people around you. Here's the good news. God's here for you. God loves you. God knows you. God is for you, not against you. And God has given you His Spirit to help you overcome and even overcome the enemy's tactics in your life so that you can walk free and be holy in God's story. And for God to write out His story in your life and for you to fulfill the mission and the calling that God has for you. Come on, it's good news. Oh, so I wanna invite you to stand if you would, please. In this year, this new year of the Jewish calendar, are we stepping over the threshold believing God for more. Here's the thing, what do you need to let go of? What is it from yesteryear? Maybe it's some sin that you're struggling with. Maybe it's some doubt in yourself, but some other things that are going on. What is it in your own life where you know that you're not living up to God's call? You're not, you don't have clean hands. You don't have a pure heart. You don't have your priorities ordered. You don't have truth coming out of your lips. What is it that you need to let go of? It's very simple. It's making a determination. Well, first of all, it's saying, Lord, please forgive me. So take a moment right now and do business with the Lord. If you wanna, yeah, just do business with with Him. There's some things, even as I've been speaking, that the Lord's probably been putting His finger on and saying, oh yeah, yeah, gossip, you need more love. Oh yeah, anger. Oh, let me pour out my love into you. Oh. 
yeah, struggling with self-hatred, let me pour my love into your heart. What is it that you need to let go of? To let go of it means just to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't wanna live this way anymore. And I receive your grace. Just ask the Lord for forgiveness. It's very simple, no extra effort required. Simply ask Jesus for His forgiveness. Ask Him to pour out His love, to overwhelm you with His love and His grace. And ask Him to take you deeper into relationship with Him. The, the answer isn't crank the wheel, try harder. The answer is step into His love. So Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. We ask for a fresh baptism of love right now, all the way across this room. A fresh baptism, a fresh outpouring, Lord. I pray that you would go to all the places of pain in us, all the places that are causing in that pain, causing us to be misshapen and coming away from the person that you've called us to be. And I pray right now, that you would pour out grace and freedom and love and joy. And as we're stepping into this new year, I want to just, as Ash did last week, I want us to just do a prophetic act. That's just to make a step sideways, forwards, whatever it is. But just, if you wanna to come to the front and just make, a, just make a declaration that I am in my heart determining to pursue the Holy Spirit for His love and His grace. Just make a step forward if you want to. We're leaving what's behind. We're leaving our sin, we're leaving our shame, we're leaving our false identity, we're leaving our idolatry. And we're stepping in to the love of God. And as we step into the love of God, we know He's gonna meet our every need. We have an amazing team that we here at the front, so don't hesitate to come and we'll be more than happy to pray for you. We also have a healing ministry and a freedom ministry right here. Um, if it's your first time as well and you have questions or you wanna connect, we have a welcome centre through the glass doors and our bookstore is open as well. There's 20% um, off, um, but yeah. So if you're connecting with God, if you want prayer, just feel free to just stay in that place, connect with us. Um, if not, then we'll see you next week. Thank you for coming and have a great rest of your day. As we were preparing and praying into the conference theme for this year, we really felt the passage out of John where Jesus says, I give you peace. And then He says, I'm sending you into the world and be filled with the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. capture the heart of God, to be sent as Jesus was sent, sent by the Spirit, sent carrying peace, sent with His love. We really need to receive more of the Holy Spirit. We're hungry for more of Him. We are the sent ones.